Looks like I got a crew in YouTube, got a crew on Zoom. Marsha's joining us for the first time. Let's have some fun, shall we? Timer is up. It should be five o'clock. And let's get going. All right. Welcome, 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 everybody. If you're brand new, make sure you uh, throw it in the chat, whichever chat you got access to, either YouTube or Zoom. And I'd love to welcome you. I am your host, Jeffrey Turnmeyer. I have been trading, gosh darn near all my life. Um, got started playing a stock market game and when I was like in third grade. Um, it's a long time ago at this point, you know, getting close to 40 years ago. And when I turned 18, opened a real money account, been trading ever since. 2020 was very kind to me. Um, made seven figures in the market during COVID crap. And uh, a friend of mine, Rob Booker, got me started teaching other people how I do what I do. And that leads us to here. I've not been a guru for, uh, I guess we're coming up on two years here in March, the end of March. So welcome you're in the right spot I'm hopefully teach you some practical stuff show you some a little bit of what I, I know how to do and uh, yeah let's jump into it shall we so as always all trading involves a substantial risk of loss as I'm sure you know past performance is never indicative of future results this presentation right here is informational educational and fun is not a recommendation to buy or sell anything you know forget it you know any instrument if you desire that personal financial advice, you need to hire and consult a financial advisor. We all know this, right? Um, so let's jump into it. Now, um, that's interesting. Introducing minds, whatever. All right. So if you had been with me on ATP, Ask the Pros a couple weeks ago, I talked about this boot, uh, boot barn trade right here. We were down here and today, you know, yesterday we got a heck of a pop. Today, getting some more pop. I recommended 85 calls out a while and they are up over a hundred percent so if uh you're up over a hundred percent on those calls might be a good time to close them now as far as if you want to keep risking i'm certainly put a alert up here maybe around you know 68 or so we come back through that maybe considering closing it out um targets you know 74 maybe 79 and then up here just on the edge of the screen something's going on with my mouse here skipping around 85 on the upside there um so 85 calls 85 target kind of makes sense right um i do have a couple different trades on so if you're in my discord and you ask me about it make sure you talk about which trade we're talking about if you're thinking about getting in now i would certainly wait for this to do the roadmap type setup that i always talk about where we pop up here and when we hit one of these fib lines we are likely to retrace back to that roadmap line and looks something like that come back down here that would be the point to look for a new entry so right now you're late if you're on this trade this was a measured bounce setup when i got into it based on my fib pattern and it's working out pretty well so my first target kind of that 74 area extension goal number one 79 and then the super extension up there around 85 you know, super stretch goal all right any questions? Yeah, it's crazy, right, Kimberly? <laughs> My wife's in the chat and YouTube. She's like, it's been a crazy two years. <laughs> it has been life-changing for sure. Um, it's a whole different experience doing this stuff. So, all right, moving on. Y'all came for the S&P 500, right? Um, so, and the CPI print coming up later this week. Let's shrink the volume there. Shrink the chat, or shrink the... Shrink these extra bars I have on here. All right, S&P 500. We have rallied off of the low back here in October. i move my bar down a little bit more. I think we all know, rallied up. I was kind of cautioning because the S5 FI was topping out. And I suggested that we probably get a pullback, maybe somewhere in the 40, 50 range. This was consistent with what happened in 2020. This was consistent with what happened in 2020 at the bottoming. So this was two, and this was two. So now, what do I expect to happen? I expect this to kind of chop, maybe coming up to 80, chopping back down to this 40, 50 zone, and just keep on chopping for the next three to six months. Right in that zone, as we chug higher. Now that's my primary expectation. Now, we have some things coming up. Thursday morning, 8.30 a.m., we have CPI, the new inflation print. Uh, JP Morgan's given 85% chance that we see a 1.5% 
pop in the market when that hat when that hits. So that could uh, that right now current prices that's like 60 70 points. So we could see a 60 to 70 point pop and uh, JP Morgan ana analysts are giving it that like an 85 percent chance of happening. So uh, be prepared for a pop. Uh, last time we did this, we got a pop and a drop that came all the way down to the support box. And that was the last CPI was followed up, you know, right by the FOMC rate announcement. And Jerome Powell didn't give anybody a warm fuzzy, and we hit the ideal target that I shared in Discord. And we just laid down on top of that box for like 14 trading days, and then we finally popped. We popped right up, found resistance at the roadmap line. That is typical. We did that last time over here, popped right up, found resistance, kind of hung out there for a number of days before we could pop up through. So we may chug along here for a few days, but we do have that CPI. So we can see a poke up, maybe something like that, and then a retrace, then maybe another attempt when we get to FOMC on February 1st. If you didn't have, don't have that on your calendar and alerts, you need to set an alert February 1st. At 2 o'clock p.m. is the next FOMC rate change announcement. That's a big day. It's going to be a money money maker, maker money breaker, money market mover type of day. Uh, we'll find out what the FOMC committee wants to do with the rate, the next rate change. Now, we may see CPI push us right up into this resistance box. Then we get a retrace out of that on the FOMC before we can move higher. So this is the next big resistance on the upside. After we clear the roadmap line, I do feel like we're going to probably come up here and test this. We may find a little resistance at that prior high that we saw in November and December. We have the high we saw back in August is where this green box comes from. So the kind of area between the high we saw just a month ago and the high we saw back in August kind of got this resistance zone built up in here. Now we may just pop and launch off. That's the uh, most ideal scenario for how I'm trading, but uh, it doesn't have to happen. And more realistic is that we see price kind of ping pong around in here. All right. So that's the outlook on S&P 500. NASDAQ still not looking the most bearish. Let's flip over to futures a little bit for the most complete picture. Why futures? Because they don't create gaps in the price. All right. They do a little bit, but for the most part, it fills it all in. Now this is NASDAQ. If you wanted to talk QQQ, what most people know of to trade NASDAQ, you just divide these numbers over here by 41 and you get the QQQ price. So uh, this still looks like it needs a lower low. I'm still cautious. This could still reach down one more time. And it can do that without the S&P 500 going lower. And why would I say that? Well, when we pop over and look at the heat map on the S&P 500, tech, big tech in particular, these big companies we all know, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, they don't represent a ton. I mean, there's a whole lot more stuff over here in the S&P 500. And look, Tesla is just a little, you know, relatively little guy in here. So there's tons of stuff in the S&P 500 that can still go higher in the face of tech going lower. Now, um, how do you get to this heat map? Well, you go to the TradingView homepage and it's in the products right up here under heat maps. Right there, stock, you know, products, heat maps, stock. All right. And they have a couple different ones you can look at. You can look at the NASDAQ. You can look at the Dow Jones. You can look at the S&P 500. You can look at all U.S. companies. So if we looked at all the U.S. companies, you can see there's quite a few. You can click on any of these and look at charts and whatever. So, so hopefully you learned something. Cool, right? All right. And... One of the neat things, if you just want to see the ones that are up today, you can turn all these off and just look at the ones that are up today. You want to see the ones that are up 2%, 3%? Those are the big movers for today. So handy dandy little feature there in this heat map. All right, moving on. Russell, looking even stronger than S&P. And as I've mentioned, I feel like Russell's going to lead us out of here. I am long an IWM call out to January 20th for 185. Looking for this thing to pop on the CPI and potentially keep on going. So right now that's also a measured bounce setup similar to the way S&P 500 is. 
And it's looking mighty close to the breakout here. We get a close up above this roadmap line, this thing can go. All right. Oil. Still messing around down here. Looks like it needs that one more push low, lower into the mid 60s that I keep talking about and been talking about since freaking back in March or whatever when we topped out back here. I've been talking about we needed this big pull, pull down back into the 60s. It still needs to happen. We're still just messing around here. This is not bullish yet. Hasn't broken any of these trend lines. So keeping an eye on it. Looks like it's going to go down one more time. Um, gasoline. Still looks like it wants to push down that one more time to 189 area. Um, it, ha is, it tried to break up higher. It couldn't hold on to it. Kind of did this move where it looks like it can extend right down here to this 189 area. Now, um, why did gas prices pop come the new year? Well, because there was a 16 cent a gallon additional federal tax that got passed in that Inflation Reduction Act. Bet you didn't know that, did you? That was on top of the 17% natural gas tax that got added so all this stuff adding in you know that you're gonna reduce our inflation by increasing our taxes and that has been a detriment on natural gas demand so that's why natural gas dropping out like it is gold quietly trying to push higher it's stuck right at that resistance i don't know where my, my black line went from right here but it looks like it's purple today but we've got this resistance. As soon as we start breaking through that, looks like 1900 is going to be on my alert to get longer on gold. Now, I'm still looking for a retrace. I don't want to just buy the, the rising price. I want to try to find a retrace that looks smart because right now there hasn't been one off the lows here from November. Big news. Something that uh, I was super excited to see. This is copper breaking out. This is the canary that says, hey, this kind of this in conjunction with cat and john deere de and cat these all confirm that the the economy is turning all right demand for copper is rising the futures are pushing up higher these are positive signs along with cat breaking out higher my target for that's up here around 300 and then we also have de and my target for that one up here around 490 or so all right, once DE starts breaking out, copper starts breaking out, these things are all confirming that the price is going higher. Now, how do I get the orange squiggly line? Um, down in the description is a link for the market roadmap. That's how you get it. There is a Christmas special. If you go back on some of my, a uh, couple of my older videos, there's a $5 special. You can jump into that. So, all right. Moving on. Lumber. Still chugging off down here. Could extend down to around 250. Crazy, right? Even though everything else looks like it might be turning. All right. Now, one thing I want to mention. Let's see. LTC, USD. This one right here has a halving event coming up in August. It's nearing a breakout point. We start breaking out through 85. This one can run up here to around 130 on Litecoin. Maybe you haven't heard of Litecoin. It's been around and it has a halving event coming up. It's creating a little excitement. So this thing may go on a run. It's been outperforming Bitcoin as of recently. Another one that uh, it's kind of a little harder to acquire. Still interesting. Oh, keyboard's being stupid here. Awesome. Skipped one of my letters and somehow opened email on the other screen. Awesome. That was so cool, keyboard. All right, X, M, R. Come on, M, 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 M. Why won't the M work? There we go. Now a bunch of M's. XMR, USD. Where is the USD? Oh, put it right in the middle, huh? Why is keyboard? There we go. XMR, USD. This one, same, similar sort of pattern. We need to see a break up through this one. Uh, it's kind of doing it, you know. About 165 really indicates that we could start seeing a move up. And this thing can double, triple very quickly. If we look at where it came from, way up here. This thing is getting a little sparky. Um, I do mine XMR via uh, NiceHash. So I've noticed a lot of my computers have been switching over to mining XMR after Versa kind of 
that it's having. So XMR getting a little popularity here and the payout rate. So a little excitement coming in on XMR. How can you buy copper? That's a good question. And um, if you're in my Discord, ask me later. I'll come up with a good play for you. All right. Moving on. Mora saw a 17% gain, even though it's been beaten down like crazy. It is coming back a little bit. Potential. It, it, it's not there yet. It's got a long way to go. But I know lots of you like to know about it, so this one's getting there. SLV. Yeah, we can talk about silver. Silver looking like it might get that pullback I was talking about. It's working on it a little bit. Looks like it wants to come right down there. We get that pullback and then start curling up. It's time to load up. I'll, I'll keep you updated on that one. All right, coin announced a bunch of layoffs today, but it popped because layoffs are bullish because they're saving money. My target has been down here at 30 for a while. Got that $30 price right there. I also have one down around 20 and I'm not convinced that they aren't gonna um, make one more dip lower. Little little trouble. Um, they they kind of published. There's dark times ahead for crypto, and they were laying off about 20% of the workforce. So, caution on Coinbase. All right, rolling up and catching um, BX rays list here. GDX. Yes. Uh, oh, GDX. Put the fingers on the right keys. Yeah, that was a market roadmap push right there. The market roadmap set up and. Right to the extension, I would be careful. That's ripe for another pullback. Hit that one, hit that $32 target area there. You know, $31.99. So be careful. Um, another one of my favorites there, GDXJ, also hitting extensions, looks like. Running the, yeah. Right to the target there, so be careful. Um, I am long gold, one of the miners. Um, not that gold, G-O-L-D, Barrick, right there, this gold, I'm long out to January 24, on some 22 and 23 and $24 calls, I think, so, look for that run, that pop, that pop out there, all right, next up, let's see, WWE, yeah, that's a uh, potential sales thing, Vince McMahon coming back, that's a breakout higher targets, of course. You know, got right to the 90. Next up will be 99 above that, above that 104. And then 118, 126. Of course, I think it'll do the pullback because every time it basically pulls back after it gets about to the 1618 extension. So watch out for a pullback if you are long on WWE. All right, HD. Still working on breaking out here. Did the first thing I needed, did the second thing I needed, which was pull back to the roadmap line. Third thing I need is a breakout higher. Target all the way up here around 460. That's gonna take a while. That could take like a year. So, all right, BMO. Still finding resistance at that roadmap line. Um, I think last week I, I cautioned. We can stretch down if we don't break out. Be careful. That looks pretty bad. All right. Um, let's see. ABBV. Yeah, it's kind of stuck right here. If we can get a breakout above these highs. Target up here. Around 190. 187 to 200. And more likely just to head up here to around 190. But it may come back to the roadmap line before it can do that. So it found resistance in the classic resistance area. So be careful on that one. All right. UNG looks horrible because natural gas looks horrible. Breaking down below the lows from last spring. So not too good on natural gas. And CI. Yeah. Nice pullback. If it holds the roadmap line, the next move up be something like 349, 364. UNH though, um, looking like on a path down to this area. 
So not all have healthcare looking great. XLV also looking kind of bearish. So be careful. This one can, if, if it decides to break down, like this is the B wave potentially, we could see a move down here to this 111 area on XLV. And that may take a bunch of the healthcare stuff with it. So, all right, X, sure. Still looking like that. Return to the high. Back to 39. And it kind of follows copper and stuff. I mean, that chart looks a lot like the copper chart breakout, potentially. We got a little resistance there at 30. We get back above 30, you know, 31. Then we can start looking for a return to the prior high. Above that, 45, first target up there. This one's just going to take a while. So I wouldn't play that with options uh, short term. We're looking like that consolidation took a little while. This could take a year or more to get going here. All right. USO, yeah, I'll get you. If I missed your request, um, you know, try to take it easy on me. I got lots of them flying here. So um, I don't know why I typed SO. That was weird. USO, US oil. Yeah. Continuing down, just like CL. Um, the play I like better is UCO, but it's still in this downtrend. Until we break out, I wouldn't go long oil. No. Short oil, sure. Um, I think last week I talked about going doing SCO. That thing would have popped and made you like almost two dollars on the shares. So that's my short. Um, if you just want to buy shares of something, that's the way to play short oil right there. Now, I don't know that the, the downside is huge right now for oil, so be careful. That's what I would have to say. I'm just waiting for it to, waiting for the long to set up myself. So, all right, FCX, Fox Chat, Charlie X Ray. Oh, look at that. Right to the target. I'd watch for a retrace there. God, that. Sometimes I scare myself with what happens. We got the pullback. It didn't quite do, go as deep as I thought it would, but it went right up to the target. So it did it much faster than I thought it would too. Is that luck or is that good? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, watch for a pullback on FCX. It doesn't have to, it can just keep on going at this point. Uh, let's see, let's run a bigger fib line here off this bigger move. Let's see what we got. And we're, we're right at that 618.786 resistance area. We get on up through 48 and it looks good to possibly continue up to 59 or 68. So be, uh, make sure you follow it with stops. That's my best advice. All right. <laughs> Let's see, XLV. Yeah, it could be forming a head and shoulders on XLV. PSX, yeah, it was kind of a swing in the miss in the breakout there. Kind of typically does that. Pulled back almost to the roadmap line. Now the next extension can get us right out to that 120 area. And interestingly enough, a lot of these, um, like VLO, OXY, a lot of these um, not pulling back quite like oil is. So that one did exactly what I thought it was going to do. And sitting at the roadmap line yet again. So that little resistance breaking out right back to the roadmap line. The next breakout can take us to some extensions here on OXY. All right, URA. And a lot of these alternate energy type plays that were exciting last year, just not doing so hot right now. URA, trying to break out. It's got some heck of a downtrend going there. I'm still holding some URA, still selling calls against it. Looking for the bigger pop up here to 35 to 40 area, but it may take a while. And like LAC also getting beat down. I mean, look at that. That one can drop out all the way down here to two, so be careful. Maybe not two if we do it on the, let's see, click the, click the tool. There we go. If we 
measure that right there. It's kind of sloppy. Yeah, it looks like it could get down to 12. Would be more realistic on the the log scale. That's comparing this little wedge thing it did right here and dropping down. It's about 12. Be careful if you're long LAC. I do hold some shares myself. Selling calls, long-term calls. So, all right, Microsoft. Yeah, they beat down a little bit. Big news for them today, um, possible $10 billion investment into OpenAI. That's the chat GPT. If you're familiar, if you're not familiar, there's a crazy AI chat thing you can talk with. It's been down for two days, but uh, a company named OpenAI has published this thing on the internet and you can chat with it. It, it can do all sorts of stuff. It can write you a song, it can write you a poem, it can write freaking indicator code for trading view. Um, <laughs> How do I know? Because I asked it to write me some indicator code and it did it. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah, FCX could be a copper play. You know, it, Freeport Mark Moran does mine some copper. So LVS, yeah, that's a extension right there. Be, be careful, be cautious. It doesn't have to go much higher than 55 before getting a bigger retrace. It's very classic. Find resistance at the 100%. Didn't even slow down at the 1272, right to the 1618, trouble, 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 retraced back to the 1272, found support, then popped right on up. Looks like 55 will probably be the next resistance. If it doesn't slow down there, 59 above that. One of these times though, it's gonna retrace all the way back down to the roadmap line. So be cautious. All right. W day downside target. What would you think? Run the fib. Eh, it could be reversing here. That was a lower low. If it's gonna go down again, this would be where I would expect it to find support right there. And that's looking at this fib and this fib kind of not exactly lining up right there and I did that one a little sloppy so it can hold here and go higher so I, I watch all right we start breaking back above 175 you see how this level right in here So that's kind of been resistance. And try to be above, try to be above, try to be above. Tried, broke up, couldn't hold it. Tried again. So if we break above that like 175 area right in there, I would not want to be trying to short that. So be careful right there. All right. <laughs> T-U-S-K, huh? Yeah. Um, low price stuff doesn't exactly work the best on my method here. So looks like we got the extension there and pullback could reach up to 950. But a return back to the this roadmap line around five dollars is definitely in the cards here. You can see it did that before over here. After getting that little extension, came down. We could do the same thing right over here. So be careful. All right. <laughs> I did that, Deb. If you go over to my YouTube page on, I think the, the last Friday of the month, I put a whole video on the roadmap line. So you're welcome to go watch that video. It's jeffreytrader.com slash YouTube. Throw it up right here real quick, right under my face. And back to the chart. All right. Celsius Holdings. Yeah, that's a... Looks like it's going to retrace to the roadmap line. A lot of these energy drinks and soft drinks all looking similar. So looks like it's going to get that last little push down right there. If it finds support, it can finally push up out of here. Um, you know, the monster right there. Getting a pullback, but it's not down to the roadmap line. It wants to push on up. And it held this support right here kind of chugging sideways but the next push up 
watch that one. And KO, also pulling back to the roadmap line. Kind of riding, riding that downtrend line though. That's the, the bummer on that one. It's kind of got this downtrend line cooking. And then Pepsi, kind of retracing the roadmap line. So, all right, LEV. Bought at 202 in the summer. Well, looks like it's going down the toilet. I don't remember who I pulled that up for for before, but it looks like that one's going down the toilet. <laughs> Sorry, Amron. All right. Yeah, yeah. We could get we could get chat, uh, chat eight G D G P T to write write a Jeffrey Trader song. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? All right. S P W R Sun Power. It looks choppy. And that's that's not really going anywhere. Looks kind of blah. That was a higher high, but that's a lower high. Lower low, higher low, higher low, higher low. Roadmap line almost non-existent. Looks gnarly. Looks like it's just gonna do more of this. Until maybe it breaks up or down, I don't know. And the up or down would be something like this. And then we go copy paste. Could it be down? Paste. Could it be up? Oh, grab the line. Could it be up? Makes a pretty big range there. That thing can go anywhere from nine dollars to forty dollars. What's it gonna do? That's why I call it the watermelon seed squeeze play. That's uh hard to know which one it's going to do. And it might do like the S&P did. Um, right here, if we look at this one on, well, let's go to a different S&P chart that doesn't have a bunch of crap drawn all over it. Down here around the 15 minute. Back here. Coming into the beginning of the year, we had kind of the same squeeze setup going on here. We tried to break out lower, and then we shot up through the top of it. That's why I say you don't know which way it's going to go. So we were kind of bouncing, bounce up, bounce down, bounce up, bounce down, getting tighter, and then we popped out. But then we stalled out and we came back and almost tested it today. So... Got to be careful on these things. All righty. Choo, choo, choo. <laughs> I, I'm working on trading for chat GPT, so we'll see. Jill, sure thing. We've been about 30 minutes, so look at a few more. Wrap this up. Oh, not good data on the 15 minute. Let's see. That's a nice move up there from that consolidation back here. Yeah, right to the 272. I would expect that road, uh, road map line touch here. That double top, watch for that. I'm sure you're hoping for more on the upside, but I would be very, very careful right now. That looks like a classic ABC situation. Let's see, where's the... Right there. Just be careful, please. All right, QS. I haven't looked at that in a while, but eh, it could break its downtrend, but shoot, that looks pretty gnarly. All right. 
AAL. American Airlines. Yeah. It's trying. Trying really hard. And we got this. Check this out right through here. It's kind of a flip point right there. See where it was support. Support, support, resistance, 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 resistance. We got to break through that. So I'd look for, I'd probably set an alert up here around $16. If you're looking for a long, if you're looking for a short, that looks like it could be reversing because that's a potential head and shoulders type situation right there. Upside down. Look right here. Shoulder, head, shoulder. That guy right there. Potential to pop right up to 20. And we can confirm that with, yep. And 19 and 20. All right, hopefully that uh, helped John American Airlines. It's not the best looking head and shoulders, but it sure does stick out at me. So A-E-H-R. That's a nice little move there. At 30 and 34. Be the targets. I can, you know, I can keep on going, but. Yeah, 30, 67, and 34. Above that, 41, 45, 55, 62. But eventually it's going to curl back down. I mean, let's see, last time we got it to 272. So this time, 41, maybe? Maybe? Gets sparky right after earnings, looks like. So. Alrighty. Huge spread, yeah. Sometimes they do have a huge spread. Cost, uh, Costco, and yeah, broke down. That was the watermelon seed squeeze play too. Watch out for that one to drop though. If it goes down, it can go down to three fifteen ish. It breaks back up through, it can go up like crazy big. So be careful. That can just be the fake out move right there, and then it can rip. So if we uh, control C, control V, copy, paste, put it right up here. If we broke out higher, it could be out to 760. <laughs> Ridiculous prices. That's a crazy big range there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. JPM, I see on YouTube, yeah. Um, that is a bullish, potentially bullish setup right there. I'll delete these old lines. That is kind of my ideal reversal setup I look for in a lot of stuff, like Home Depot right back here. That same kind of pattern. So JPM can take off. Um, I think Morgan Stanley was on the roadmap line this week. Yeah, same pattern. So financials looking a little good at least. Um, let's check out FES. This one tends to run every time before financials announce earnings. It goes on a little run. It does it like every quarter. I don't. I have it on the old. I charted this on the old thing. So on my other platform. I got two accounts on TradingView. Pretty much every quarter, FAS goes on a little run. So it's difficult to make money, especially if you try to do options, but um, it works. It doesn't necessarily continue after all the financials announce earnings. And starting Friday, I think, is financial earnings. So, all right. Yeah, FGA in YouTube. All you have to do is just uh, take YouTube and rewind it, and you can go back and watch the whole thing. So, all right. Uh, if I skipped anything of yours, I am sorry. Let's see, I, 
I see F N G U. F N F N G U. It looks pretty bad. Um, yeah. As I always say, leveraged ETFs and stuff like that don't necessarily work the best with my methods. Um, it's like biotechs, cheap stuff, and um, leveraged ETFs. They kind of break the patterns or um, don't respect the fibs necessarily. So, like UVXY, look at that thing. I told you it was going to the toilet. Look at that thing. Um, uh, the one I said was better. Check that out. SBXY. Almost right up to the targets. So, but be care, be dang careful on these. Now, um, I, if you go to the community tab on YouTube, like if I pull up my Jeffrey Trader, spell my name right. You go over here, it takes you to my channel, and then you go to this community tab. I threw out this trade right here. SPXL, long call, 70. Let's talk about that real quick before we go. I don't usually buy calls on this thing. Um, it's already leveraged 3x, all right? It's bullish. This is like... A little bit of a uh, roulette spin and a roll of dice that we're going to see a pop on that FOMC in the CPI. So it's kind of a bet that we're going to see this. I'm um, kind of targeting my target alert that for whatever reason is not showing up on here is like 80, which is just above the roadmap line right up here. So like right up here around 80. I'll pull it down to 80 or maybe. Yeah, 79. That's good enough. Oh, time in 80. There we go. So that's my target right now. 80. All right. AAP. It looks like it's going down the toilet. I don't, I don't have any trade on that. Haven't been watching it because it looks like it's going to go. On down. I mean, that's what the chart looks like. So, yeah. PFE. I don't have any trades on PFE. So, yeah, it looks it's broken, breaking below the roadmap lines. So it looks like it's gonna go on down too. Or the green, well, they're actually triangles, and they're they come off the echo trades indicator. It's when the five and thirteen cross. I have red ones that are for short entries. <laughs> it comes off the echo trades uh, trading system. Those are potential entries, entry signals. So, alrighty, I think I caught her up with everybody. Stay safe out there. Uh, that, I mean, Pfizer looks like it's going down the toilet. And, you know, potentially with the FD, FDA and uh, releasing all the VARS virus um, reports, there could be some fallout for vaccine companies. So I'd be careful. Alrighty. Well, glad you came by, Marsha, and everybody else, everybody on YouTube, everybody on Zoom. We're going to wrap it up here. Um, yeah, so check it out. If you uh, check a video out over wherever, uh, up there somewhere, put the link. And uh, I'll see you again next week, 5 o'clock. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. you get a notice when I go live. Um, otherwise, we'll see you.